This is a Thin Client, a compact computer designed for accessing applications and resources stored on a remote server. Such Thin Clients are used by doctors in clinics, people working in banks, operators in factories, and in many other fields. Thin Clients are now part of the digital workspace that many of modern organizations are actively adopting. A digital workspace means that an organization's data is stored centrally, in a data center or in the cloud, and employees connect to their virtual pieces remotely, for example, through such thin clients. This approach to organizing information provides a number of benefits, including easy scaling and flexible centralized management. However, while it may seem secure, in reality it is not that secure. An important reason for this, oddly enough, is the undue lack of attention paid to endpoint security. We conducted a study and found more than 10 different attack scenarios using Thin Clients. For example, Thin Clients use VNC or RDP libraries to connect to a remote server. And 37 and 25 vulnerabilities were found in them respectively. We also conducted an experiment, and it showed that it takes less than 5 minutes to gain unauthorized access to the credentials of a Thin Client user. This can be done with a popular security research tool by conducting a man-in-the-middle attack. But what does it mean for business? Let's look at a real-world example. Let's imagine a contractor that provides remote services to its customers, for example, equipment maintenance. One of its engineers remotely connects to the server of one of its smaller customers. The customer's server turns out to be infected, and as a result, the contractor engineer Thin Client becomes infected too, for example, due to a vulnerability in the Thin Client component. The engineer then uses the same infected Thin Client to connect to the server of another customer, a large industrial company. As a result, the attacker can perform any action in the engineer's name up to and including violating the technological process. This example is not hypothetical. In 2019, North Hydro, a large Norwegian aluminium company, was hacked, and the entry point was probably an RDP server in the virtual desktop infrastructure. As a result of this cyber attack, 22,000 computers in 40 countries around the world were infected. Production was halted at several sites, and there were supply chain issues. The total loss from the incident is estimated at $65 million. How to prevent such incidents? That's where cyber immunity can help. In modern systems, vulnerabilities are patched. Cybersecurity experts discover a vulnerability, the vendor releases a patch, the owner of a thin client then installs it, and so on in an endless cycle. But this reactive approach makes it almost impossible to keep up with the accelerating pace of attackers. Therefore, it is important to shift the focus from covering all vulnerabilities in time to making it too difficult to use vulnerabilities, both known and unknown, to hack the system. To do this, security must become an inherent part of the system design, and the cyber immune approach explains exactly how to do it. It provides, firstly, a specific methodology, how exactly to organize the development process and what results should be achieved at each step. And secondly, design requirements, how exactly the system should be designed to implement the secure by design approach in a cost-effective way. In the case of a thin client, the cyber immune approach allows us to guarantee the protection of its core value, a secure connection to a remote server. Specifically, due to its secure design, even hacking one component of a thin client will not lead to a violating of its critical properties. In this way, we are able to neutralize a significant proportion of attacks aimed at thin clients and, as a result, at entire companies. <laughs>